It is early morning in Kangaroosawak, Greenland. In the event we have a rapid decompression. Airmen from the 109th Airlift Wing from New York State are far from home on this cold morning. Spread it apart and put this over your head. It is about an hour from takeoff for a group of students and scientists heading into the Arctic chill of Greenland's vast ice sheet. For many of these students, it is their first time up on the ice. But for Lieutenant Colonel Bruce Jones, We are polar aviators. It has become a routine mission that is far from ordinary. We are the only uh, C-130 in the world that have skis on them, and we're able to drop 30 to 40,000 pounds of cargo in one trip. Uh, you wouldn't be able to do that with a smaller airplane or any type of uh, other type of vehicle. The C-130 is a robust military cargo airplane, first used by the U.S. Air Force during the Vietnam War. Ski and I'm a 6 on a German one, two, zero, this one, three. Ski and I'm a 6 Roger. It is now used by many different militaries around the world, but only the 109th has the distinction of flying to both polar regions. Our uh, primary mission is down in Antarctica during the uh, winter season, and then during the uh, off season, we come up here and we support VECO. VECO Polar Resources is contracted by the National Science Foundation to coordinate travel and cargo for the scientists conducting the research. Greg Huey is one of those scientists. To study the atmosphere in places like Summit, Greenland's tallest point, Huey depends on equipment brought in and out by the C-130s. It's hard work because you, you might have a six or seven week project and you know the, you come in on the C-130s on a certain day and you're going to leave on the C-130s and uh, you have to make sure all your equipment's there, you have to make sure that everything works. For the most part, everything does work. The 109th prides itself on its maintenance record and its safety record. It has never lost an aircraft. Ice and snow can easily ground the C-130s, but decades of operating in the difficult conditions have enabled the unit to quickly return the aircraft to service. While the weather frequently wreaks havoc on tight schedules up on the ice sheet, there is no alternate way to get in and out of the remote camps. The 109th is currently the only organization capable of transporting the large amounts of cargo and people needed to conduct the scientific research. Well, if we weren't here, they would probably have to uh, either uh, walk, ski, or uh, take a, a sled dog team into the location, which would probably hamper the, uh, the amount of uh, research they would get done. The 109th Airlift Wing is made up of Air National Guard personnel. Most typically have other full-time jobs and serve in uniform part-time, usually about three weeks a year. The 109th's ongoing support of the National Science Foundation's efforts in Greenland and Antarctica comes at a time of war in Iraq and Afghanistan. Despite the current strain that combat operations have placed on members of the National Guard, it has so far not affected peacetime operations of the 109th in the polar regions. We are a military organization. We bring the professionalism of a military uh, organization uh, and the skills, and we have the assets. Uh, but the, the actual mission we do is basically in support of, of science for the betterment of uh, you know, mankind as a whole. In 1999, the 109th made international headlines when Dr. Jerry Nielsen, a physician at the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station, discovered a cancerous lump in her breast. A ski-equipped C-130 with the 109th attempted a dangerous landing in Antarctica's winter. Despite battling poor visibility and temperatures reaching negative 50 degrees Celsius, the mission was a success. The 109th airlifted Dr. Nielsen to the United States for treatment. Kane Fairball, VOA News, Kangaroosawak, Greenland.